You're listening to Bottles Powerhouse. Bottle Morning Star, your friendly neighborhood foul mouth podcaster, and. That's right, a duet, another freestyle, so I don't know what I'm gonna say next. How I get to be the villain of this here story is something I'm trying to figure out how I fit in this category. I mean, I'm such a nice guy when you really think about it. Went to church and fucked the devil and got kicked out for it. I don't believe it. How are you guys gonna kick me out for that? I thought y'all hated the motherfucker. What's up with that? But anyway, here I go with my flow, not knowing where the fuck I'm gonna go next because these words are just bombarding my head. I never know exactly what is it that I'm going to say or what I have said. I'm just going around looking for little points and I'm looking at a screen that is off and looks like a cat staring right at me. I got cats in the head. Am I Catman? No, I'm Batman. Oh, never mind. Let me break it down like this. I'm gonna go and tell you that this is it. I'm just messing around. Thank you for sticking around. You're listening to Bottles Powerhouse. What up, motherfuckers and motherfuckerettes? Welcome to another episode of Pato's Powerhouse. Wow, it's been a hell of a two weeks. I mean, I don't know. It's I don't even know how long it's been since I've had the chance to be behind the microphones here. Uh, it's been a busy life. As you know, I am one of the hardest working motherfuckers on this here third rock from the sun. So I'm always working. I'm always doing something. You know, got to pay them bills, you know. This podcast thing, well, you know, it's fun to do, but hey, come on. It's it's not paying the bills, you know. Maybe if uh, K Dog and I had been a little more consistent back in the day, we'd be, I don't know, telling a different story today. And I'm still rhyming. Anyway, by the way, big shout out to Anabolic Beats. Uh, that beat that I was uh, doing a duet on TikTok, which I, I like to do those for fun, you know. As uh, some of you may know, back in the day, I wanted to be a rapper when I was younger. I tried, I went into the whole Christian rap when I was religious. And, uh, Anyway, I'll, that's something I'll talk about some other time. But anyway, once in a while, I still get the bug to, you know, throw out a few rhymes. And it's just for the fun of it. I mean, come on. You know, uh, although, although you know, it's funny. I, I kind of agree with Ice-T that uh, people my age, you know, we are, I'm as old as hip-hop is, for those who want to know. So what I'm saying, if I'm saying anything, is that, I mean, I think that, yeah, I could probably come up with, a dope jam that would probably, I don't know, rock a few crowds, but it would never have the same effect as uh, if I was, let's say, in my 20s versus now. I mean, it's just the way it is. It's always been that way. I mean, I don't know. But uh, I I heard uh, Ice-T say that in in an interview where they were asking him, you know, if he were to make a a hit, you know, now, I mean, it, it wouldn't hit as hard as it would have hit back when he was younger i mean like i said it's just the way the system the way is but then i was listening to uh murder gram 2 where ll cool j and eminem you know drop their flows and you know i was wondering and thinking about there's so many genres you know so many categories when they give awards you know hip-hop blah 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 and uh over the years i mean you know old rock became like contemporary music, you know, for adults, you know, the the boomers that got older. Well, you know, us hip hoppers, which is mainly Gen Xers and stuff like that. What I'm saying, if I'm saying anything is uh, maybe something like adult contemporary rap should be a thing. You know, I mean, we're always talking about how we don't like the mumble rap and stuff. I mean, I mean, maybe it, it would extend the life of some of our favorite rappers who are still putting it down. I mean, you know, uh, Ice-T, Eminem, LL Cool J, Snoop Dogg. I mean, there's, there's so many to name. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But I mean, I personally think adult contemporary rap could be a thing. And not to mention, it would probably help some middle-aged motherfuckers like myself and others who didn't get a chance to fulfill their dreams either because religion got in the way, family got in the way, or things got in the way that just the time wasn't there. You never know. It, you could be, we could, there could be a 65 year old out there waiting to put down a track that's just gonna rock this motherfucking world. I, I don't know. Th- th- that, that's just my thoughts. Maybe because, like I say, I'm not a younger youngster anymore. And but, like I said, for me, busting my rhymes right now, everything is just for fun. You know, somebody asked, do I have a YouTube channel? Well, we have a YouTube channel for the podcast, but uh, which is the pot, the podcast check. 
uh, it's with a letter D because there's also a the podcast check um, uh, which is uh, kind of like the record label for this podcast I mean I guess everything I do I still do I, I operate in the whole record label artist type thing but what I'm saying uh, like I don't know I might consider uh, I don't know recording or doing something and it'll probably mainly be just for me for fun you know not because I mean music is fun music is life music keeps you young music is what makes the makes the world go around whether you like it or not we everybody has this like beat inside of them that they rock to you know which one that is for you you know what your song is which uh uh, wow, what, what was I going to say? You know, I got to see clips uh, from um, the uh, the awards, you know, where LL Cool J brings Public Enemy to stage. Watching them perform gave me goosebumps, you know. The kind of chills some of these holy rollers get when they're in a worship service and they feel the spirit, but it's really the vibrations and the music and everything else. But what I'm saying is I felt that, I felt that rush when I saw Chuck D., and Flav of Flav together performing, at, you know, it, it, you know, especially once he said that line that I've scratched so many times before in my routine practices, you know, that once again back is the incredible. Wow! It, it, when when he said that, when he was rhyming that, I heard Chuck D say that. I got the chills. Hey, I'm getting the goosebumps right now. Kind of like if I was preaching a message that is spirit filled. And I know some of you motherfuckers listening going like, oh, there you go, Morningstar. Always trying to bring on the the blasphemous side of you. But no, not really. Like I said, all I'm saying is, is that I got that rush when I f- saw Public Enemy. So that's one of the things that I've been doing. I've been watching TV. I made it out to see Beetlejuice, you know, me and 26. Uh, it's my partner in crime. We also made it back to the gym. So if tragedies and things start happening that are weird, uh, I mean, last time I went to the gym a couple of years ago when I Maybe not this time. Maybe not this time because I've already been back to the gym. The original time, all kinds of tragedies started happening, right? Queen of England, uh, Coolio, uh, horrible hurricane in Florida. I don't know. And um, K-Dog was blaming me for getting stepping out of the fitness protection program and changing the algorithm of the world, you know. You brought this upon this motherfucker. That's one of the things he said. Anyway, or something to that effect. But anyway, we're just goofing around here. So anyway, Beetlejuice 2. I don't know. I'm not going to spoil it, but you should go watch it. Uh, I liked it. Could have been better, maybe. But it played on the nostalgia. I liked it. It it was a fun watch. So if you're trying to just escape reality, go, I don't know, do something and you haven't watched it, uh, yeah, go watch it. Deadpool 3, too. If you haven't watched it, hey, what the fuck? Seriously. I'm like... I don't know what to do with you. I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, um, that's one of the things that I wanted to touch base with you guys. You know, I'm still around, still podcasting. Uh, I hope that somebody out there is listening that, you know, I hope I can bring you a few minutes of, uh, I don't know, that thing that helps you get away from whatever your problems, your troubles are, you know, because I do this. In order to, you know, kind of escape that, you know. Today is um, September 22nd, uh, September 23rd. Uh, today, the the 22nd and the 23rd are very hard days for me. I mean, it's been seven years since uh, my dad, uh, well, like I said, checked out from this rock. So, uh, and... Uh, I got the the last, I used to talk to him every morning, every morning around 6 a.m. I used to call him and, you know, chit chat with him for about 15 minutes and and then, okay, back again. We lived lived in different cities, so, you know, we were always talking on the phone and uh, it was a Friday about seven years ago and uh, I just know that um, I forgot to call him that morning and, uh, I got a call from his number in the evening and I saw it and I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to get an earful because I forgot to call him this morning. 
But it wasn't that. It was the nurse at the ER asking me who was I to, you know, said his name. And I'm like, I'm his son. And he, he just started, get, gave me the news. And they helicopter, helicoptered him from, um, he lived in a border town in Arizona. They helicoptered him to Tucson. And we just went from there. And, um, yeah, got that news in the evening. By By the morning, the decision was made that he couldn't survive it. And he died in the following morning. He was ran over by a vehicle. I mean, and like I said, uh, at least the guy stopped, did all the things that he was supposed to do. So no grudges there. You know, I mean, I imagine some people, he has to live with the fact that he ran over another human being. I mean, that, that could be very traumatizing too. So all I'm saying is right now, this time of the year, it's pretty harsh. I mean, the last three or four, probably the last three years, August 22nd is his birthday. For some reason, I, I've been, I click on the Lucifer series and I start watching it. It's kind of like a comfort show. You know how you have your comfort zone, your comfort zone, yeah. Comfort zone, your comfort shows, your comfort songs, things that you do. When you feel weird. So, anyway, last couple, of sh- I and I've been doing that this year again for some reason. As soon as his birthday hit, I started watching. Uh, I don't know. I'm not saying that my dad was the devil, but I'm not confirming nor denying. All I'm saying is that uh, I don't know. That's just my comfort sh- comfort show. And like I said, this l- next couple of days are usually pretty hard, and. Uh, one thing came out of uh, all this back in 2017 when this happened. Uh, in an effort to like get me out of my funk, get me out of that rut, my brother from another mother came talking to me about, let's do a podcast, let's do a podcast. I got the name for this podcast we should do and blah, blah, blah. And Cursory Overload was born. And that was that's coming down on seven years now. Uh, we kind of stopped because he moved back to the East Coast, and uh, our timings are weird. I'm hardworking. He's hardworking. We all got our own issues going on. Once in a while, we get together and we put on a show, but inconsistency has been the only consistent thing we've done, so probably why we're not up there where we should be. And I'm not complaining about that either, you know, because everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason, or so they say. I kind of want to believe that sometimes. But anyway, motherfuckers, motherfucker, it's I, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, you know, maybe some of you are going through loss and it sucks. I wish I could tell you that it gets better with time. Doesn't really. I mean, sometimes you it hits you hard or sometimes it doesn't. But I just want you to know that. Uh, well. Everybody's different. We all grieve differently. I was fortunate enough to have a support there from family, friends, my sister, I love her, Uh, you know, everybody, my kids. Uh, The support of a friend who, in order to get me out of that rut, uh, helped me form, or we formed a podcast that was talking about sex robots, uh, movies, and God knows what, you know. Anyway, if you're going through the loss of a family member, you know, my heart goes out to you. And uh, know that life goes on. It's going to be okay. I mean, experiences are different. I remember my sister had a different processing than I did. I remember when he first passed away, I had a dream. I dreamt of him, not of what he looked like at 87, but what he looked like in his late 40s, 50s. And he was like at at the gate of a like a gated community. It, it looked like he was like in-house security there or something. I don't know, just weird. But I remember I was I was talking to him. He was uh, wearing a 
Superman shirt. And he's like, hey, this is where they have me. I'm going to be okay here. Then he reached out, hugged me, and kissed me on the forehead. It was one of those dreams where you could actually feel things. I actually felt that kiss on the forehead, and that's when I woke up. You know, I, I don't share stuff like this with many people or ever, but uh, it, it's hard to have conversations sometimes, even with the people that you shouldn't have any issues having conversations with. Sometimes you can't have conversations with people. So the podcasting thing comes in handy, right? So now I'm sharing it with any motherfucker that's willing to listen. Anyway, that being said, thank you for hanging out with me till now. Um, that was, uh, I'm going to share another freestyle, which I also think is anabolic beats, uh, on the information here. I'm going to put their information so that if you like the beats that I'm rapping over, I mean, obviously they're available. You can contact anabolic beats and, uh, I don't know, do your thing, whatever you want to do. If you want to use them beats also, um, what was I going to say? Live each day. Like it's your last one. Cause it very well could be. Live, love, laugh, do what you're going to do, you know, because be with the people that make you feel that you belong there with your tribe, you know. Sometimes it's family, sometimes it's not. Sometimes, like I said, they say blood is thicker than water. I don't know. I don't buy into that because sometimes people that are not from your bloodline become your family in a way that family never can now that's not an issue with me i got some pretty awesome family members and awesome non-blood family members and are you motherfuckers and motherfuckerettes that are listening to hey you're all family so till next time uh you know what i'm gonna get the fuck out of here playing a freestyle that the freestyle that i did last time just just because so you motherfuckers motherfuckerettes have a good one Auto Morning Star here, your friendly neighborhood foul mouth podcaster. Doing a freestyle here. It's not my forte, but let's see how it goes. I'm not trying to be a Latin M&M, regardless of what the AC rep said in the review back then. I'm just trying to bring my own character to life, you know, the one that escaped the mental war just as a doctor. Doc Holliday, not the pistolero, but the one that goes around grabbing nurses' asses, giving good news and bad news scenarios to patients for the fuck of it. I remember I had a lot of fun doing that. I got good news and bad news, what you want to hear first? Give me the bad news, Doc. You're gonna die, man. What's the good news? I'm fucking the nurse. I don't know. I think that's how it went back in the day. I burned all those CDs in the masters. I don't know. I was going religious at the time. What was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. But anyway, what I'm doing right now is trying to make up for last time. I don't know. I'm just having fun with this rhyme. If you like it, tell a friend. Give me a follow. You're listening to Bottles Powerhouse.